Hello everyone, my name is Raj. Welcome to my channel. In today's tutorial, we are going to take a look at how to animate the virtual screen using blueprints. In the previous tutorial, we animated the screen using sequencer and the actions. So in this one, we will take a look at how to animate the screen using blueprints. If you want to know how to create the virtual screen itself, I will put a link in the description below as well as in the eye icon on the top right corner of the screen. So do check that out first and then come back to this tutorial. So let's begin. We already have the blueprint of the screen from the previous tutorial. I will click and open the blueprint. And before we start working on the event graph, I want to do just one simple thing in the viewport. I'm going to take this frame and I'm going to parent every other element to that frame so that now when I move the frame, everything moves with it. Now let's go to the event graph and first of all I will select everything whatever is there and delete it. We don't need the construction script window so I will close it for now. In the event graph I am going to take the frame and just drag it like this to get a reference and I am going to drag a pin and search for set relative location. Set relative location. You can see here the new location says 000. Let's go back to our viewport and talk about what it is that we are trying to achieve, right? We are trying to do this. We are trying to take the frame and put it under the ground like this, which is at about minus 230. And then over time, we want this to come up like this to the initial value, which is zero. How are we going to do this? A right click and search for add timeline. Here it is add timeline. I will double click to open the timeline and I will add a flow track and here I will give it a name Z axis animation okay Z axis and I am going to right click on the timeline and add a key and do the same thing over here right click and add a key. I'm going to select the first keyframe in the time it will be zero. I will select the second keyframe and give it a time of two seconds, meaning I want the animation to happen over a time of two seconds. Now, at zero seconds, what is the value? If I go back to my viewport and select the frame, at zero, I want this to be at minus 230. If I go back to my timeline, I want this value to be minus 230. And the keyframe at 2 seconds, the value will be 0. Correct? If I click on this 2 framing, you can see the curve going from minus 230 to 0. And I will just make the length of the timeline to 2 seconds as well. Right now, if you see, the length is about 5 seconds. So I will just trim it to 2 seconds. Done. I will go back to my event graph. And now I need to connect this value somehow to just the Z value over here. It's very easy to do. Just right click on the pin here and split struct pin. And now I can connect this directly to the Z. And I will connect the update pin to this pin. And now we need a custom event. I'm going to right click and add custom event. Here it is. I will call this screen animation and I'm going to connect this to play from start. Now we need to do one more step which is to make a function and then connect the function to this custom event. So I will go here to functions and click on function and call this screen trigger. And what I'm going to do here, I am going to take the event that we just made over here, which is uh, screen animation. And I'm going to drag it like this to the function and connect the screen trigger to the screen animation. Compile and save. We already have all the other ZD components which is required in the blueprint. Please do check the tutorials to understand which one is what. So compile, save and let me move this to the side like this here and click on play and let me jump to reality hub 
Now, if I select my LED screen, you can see I have my function over here, which is screen trigger. If I click the screen trigger, the animation works. The good thing about this method of using blueprints to animate is that if I select my LED node, go to properties, and if I move this somewhere else like this, the trigger will work perfectly fine. The animation will take place at the place where we move the screen to. And this is happening because we used this set relative location. What this set relative location does, it takes the current location of the object and that's where it animates it. That's the good thing about it. If you do the animation in sequencer, then you cannot move the screen from Reality Hub because you have already set your keyframes and it has a fixed value. But here it's, it's not that case. You can move the screen wherever you want and your animation will still work fine. Now, we already have the screen coming up, right? We need it to go down as well. So what I will do is, I will add one more node in between these two. I will drag a pin and I will search for flip flop. And A is connected to play from start and B I'm going to connect uh, to reverse from end. So what this flip flop will do is, the first time this event gets triggered, it's going to play this part, which is play from start, meaning it will play from here to here. And the next time I trigger this custom event, it will play B, meaning reverse from here to here. And this will keep on repeating. You know, it will play A, B, A, B, A, B. Okay, now let's see what happens. Compile, save, come back here and play, jump to Reality Hub. The first time that I will click the screen trigger, the screen will jump to the initial value, which is minus 230. So click and you see it jumps to the initial value and then it comes up and now everything should work perfectly fine. If I click it again, it goes down and again, if I click, it comes up. The only problem now is if I stop this and play it again, go back to hub. The first click that I do, that's when the screen jumps to the initial value. That's the problem. So this is the first time that I'm going to click. If I click, you see it jumps and then the animation plays. But after that, everything is fine. So I just need to fix that. So what I will do is I will stop this. I will go to my blueprint. And here I'm going to select the frame and I'm going to set the Z value to minus 230. Compile and save. And now the screen is already under the floor. So if I hit play, come back to hub and now everything should work perfectly fine. If I click trigger, the screen comes up. If I hit trigger again, it goes down and now it works perfectly fine. And of course, from the previous tutorials, you can, you can add your media, whichever you want. So for this process, please do check out my previous tutorial to know how to create the screen. And I guess this will be my last tutorial on Reality 4.27 because after IBC, we might get Reality 5, which is based on Unreal Engine 5. Of course, there will be a lot of change in the workflow and I will be making videos on those as I go through the documentation once it is out. And do subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.